I have a Bruins take. I know this is not – I'm not going to be reinventing the wheel here, but I could not agree more with Wiggy's lead this morning. The Bruins and Don, Don Sweeney and Cam Neely should absolutely have their feet to the fire. Jim Montgomery, I do, don't believe that he should. The reason I think – that Sweeney and Neely need to have their feet for the fire is these three reasons. You need good goaltending to build a team, which you have with Swayman. You need a number one defenseman, which you have with Charlie McAvoy. The thing that the Bruins are missing so desperately, and you can see it in every team that's still playing, is elite one and two centermen. Charlie Coyle and Pavel Zaka are not elite centermen, and you're never going to win or get past the second round unless you can either draft them or you can acquire a disgruntled elite centerman like Eichel from the Sabres. You need to get a number one and number two centerman. Thanks, and I'll listen to what you have to say. Yeah. Well, I mean, isn't that what uh, Stamkos would be, right? Um, isn't is uh, Reinhardt? He's a center. Is he a center, Sean? Uh, no, I believe okay. Reinhardt's Reinhard no. a winger. But I mean, I think you need like the you know you like he said you need that elite centerman and then just more scoring, right? And I don't know if, right, I don't know if you have the elite, you don't have the elite talent other than Pasta and Martian, right? You, when you think of elite, elite talent as you watch teams throughout the league. And like the one caller said, playoff Pasta seems to be maybe a real thing. So what do you need to do? Does he need a, le a legit sentiment next to him to maybe unlock his potential when yes. it comes to his scoring capabilities? I mean, you're kind of uh, – you have your hands tied on Charlie Coyle because you did that deal, Shime, with Charlie Coyle where he's got a no trade. Yeah, but it's like, only an like eight-team no trades clause now. So, like, there is – what? What is that math? 22 other teams that you could theoretically trade him to? Yeah. He has 18 uh, teams he can't go to? Eight, eight. teams he oh, can't eight, go eight, to. Oh, eight. So that'd be 21. Yeah. So, yeah. so I, I mean, there's plenty of – I think there's options there to trade Coil if you wanted to. That's $5 million to free up. Uh, Olmark, you can easily trade. That's another $5 million as well. Those two guys alone put you over $32 million mm. in cap space this offseason, which means theoretically you could sign both. Stamkos and Reinhardt. Like when you look at this roster, you have your six starting defensemen at the at, at opening day next year. Currently, if you 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 have thirty plus million dollars to sign Jeremy Swayman to a contract and sign two stud offensive players to help you. Right, out. your top six forwards next year should look uh, extremely different than what you've seen. Correct. Also, this I season. think I mean Stamkos is kind of like in that Marshan category where he's getting up there. He's like, thirty four. Yeah, he's thirty four. But I mean, so I mean, but that's also I mean he's going to be a little cheaper. He's great in the face off dot. He's going to be awesome on the power play. All things of which you could use. Yeah, and and he's a you know if I think if you look at his numbers, I, I'm not like 100 percent sure on his exact numbers, but I think he's pretty good in the postseason when it comes to his ability to score. And that's your biggest problem right now is your biggest pro and you and Chime said he's great on the, he's great on the power play. That's where you're really having some major issues, you know. Mm -hmm. So and so in his 33 year old season, he had 40 goals and 41 assists. So like he's good. not slowing down. This know? is Joe in the car. What's up, Joe? Good morning, guys. Hey, where was this? Um, where was this talk during the regular season? I mean, are we are we forgetting <laughs> that these guys came in first place? Yeah, I mean, I, they, they had no problem scoring during the regular season. The playoffs came and they they had a problem in the playoffs because they were outplayed, outchecked, outmuscled, outshot. I mean, McAvoy wasn't McAvoy. Yeah. I mean, the regular season we had no problem. We had no problem. There was no talk of this. Well, it, not, 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 not only this regular mm -hmm. season, but now it's back-to-back -back regular seasons mm -hmm. where you are among the best in the entire NHL. You know what you I can't... always say? The playoffs are for the birds. <laughs> 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 Who cares? That, that's the point, Joe. As we said in the first hour, you are better than most regular season opponents because of the strength you have with two elite goalies. That's the reason. In the playoffs, you lose one of them, mm -hmm. and Bobrovsky is as good at times as Swayman or Olmark. And that's why you lose the series. So obviously you have to re-evaluate your roster-building approach considering the fact that you have so underachieved in the postseason. And the talk was there from me when I said you need to trade Olmark to yep. get you either scoring that you might be missing mm -hmm. um, or to get you help on the back end. We've had, we had that conversation 
at nauseum during the regular season before the trade, line, uh, trade deadline to get rid of Allmark to potentially get you somebody in there or pieces that can help you in the postseason. Yeah. And no one, no one besides maybe me and the hockey expert, Curtis, right. were like, let's get rid of Allmark and let's push him No, up. if Allmark, it. It, it, Wiggy, if Allmark would have taken the deal that they had, with, it, they had a deal with the Kings. Well, find Correct. the team. Uh, maybe I, you have to find the team that you can ship him out to. Right. They were, but think, maybe those teams wouldn't have taken him, Wiggy. They probably tried that exact thing. Who wouldn't want a, like, who wouldn't want a Vesna winning goalie? Look teams at, that already have goalies. Uh, but there's not a lot of teams out there that have Vesna the winning goalies that especially playoff contenders right and you had an entire offseason to deal them i'm sure sweeney had a heim reaction when he was like oh not enough to trade we're not going to deal But they him. also didn't know swayman was going to make this jump last offseason but you that's guess. his job right. you don't think toronto would want omak uh, toronto might sure but you really going to trade him to the team that you're going to face in the first no, no, round no, but of playoffs? I'm, I'm just saying there are teams out there yeah there are teams out there that could use a goalie like omak i agree you had him and he played in one game in the postseason. Yeah, I, I think everybody agrees that Jeremy Swayman is the guy going right. forward, and he get. But that. we all knew that in the middle of the season, before the deadline. I don't. Think Which is why they tried to trade him, Wiggy. They tried. Uh, right, but, but everybody that's agreeing with it was against the deal. Shime, you didn't want them to trade Allmark at the deadline. I mean, nobody. I mean, Wiggy and I said that, but the U three didn't think that that was the right decision. No, because I thought they'd actually go with a rotation in the playoffs, and they didn't. Right, because nobody ever swim. has. Right. I, I, I understand, <laughs> Curtis. Nobody ever has. But at the time, leading up to it, they looked like they could, and they were going to. They started that way, and then Swayman was just that good. Wiggy and I are going to start a hockey podcast. It's, you should. <laughs> we're going to call it the Skate Pod. Yeah. Can, you work, can you work food in there also? Absolutely. Okay. Well, yeah. Jackson will join us for the new food options. <laughs>